Hello and welcome back to NAS Compares and today I want to talk about Synology's DS router application for mobile. Today we are looking at this app, we're using an Android device and we're going to basically be reviewing it. I think I don't review mobile apps a lot here on the channel, I go through them every now and then but I thought this was a significant enough update as well as uh, arriving at the same time as the new Synology RT 6600AX that I did think this mobile app needed a little bit more of a review and not just the brief overview that we included in the review of that router and in today's video we're going to go through pretty much the whole app we're going to look at what it can and cannot do what I like and what I don't like and hopefully help you um, kind of decide whether not only is this router for you but is mobile access to this router as good as that of the browser-based access because the browser-based access to the router from Synology is pretty top tier Let's face it, although the hardware, some might argue in things like the 2.5 GBE um, or the application of even 10 gigabit on some of their routers, as well as Wi-Fi 6E isn't quite where people would like it to be in 2022, I'd say their software is insanely good. And although I am recording this in close proximity to the router because I've still got some other testing to do with it, so therefore you can kind of pick up the hum of my laptop there in the background as I disconnect the power to lower that fan, I will say that what everything you're going to see me to do today on the mobile app can be done both on the local area network and remotely if you're going to be accessing the router via a proxy or you're going to be taking advantage of the VPN services that are included with this or if you're going to be using the Synology Quick Connect system. But that's enough BAMF, let's carry on straight into it. So there's the router at the top. As you can see, we've got several devices connected to this and there's actually quite a lot you can do. I've got some desktop devices, mobile devices, a NAS, and another router connected to this system. And you can see the general traffic, which one of the bands they're using uh, for, clear, uh, for clarity. The 5 gigahertz dash 1 frequency there, uh, that band there on the antenna combination, two of the four, that is the high performance one of this router. So the router you choose to use from Synology, even as far back as the RT1900AC, Things will differ slightly with what you're seeing today, but not completely, because SRM is largely universal across all of these, and this app works with both SRM 1.2 and 1.3. But as you can see, you can find out more information about the average device there. So if we choose to, we can change the priority status of this if we choose to. So now this device is going to be high priority. It is the one that has to make sure it has all of the features and functionality. But as we can see, because I've not created a high profile protocol it didn't work first time so again not great there in terms of the app not being immediate something again this is going to be on a warts and all review we're keeping stuff like that in so we can see all the different devices there some of which of course like the pixel here that we're using today are going to be wi-fi 6 so as you can see the band that it's going to be utilizing uh, is going to be different as you can see that wi-fi um 6 phone that we're using today is a 1200 megabit or 120 megabytes per second Wi-Fi connection whereas if we look at things like the router that I've connected on a, a LAN we're not able to get any real-time information on that because of its classing something I'm going to show you later on in the video but if we carry on a look at say this Android phone here with this one on the uh, uh, same band as the one I'm using that's sharing part of that wider 4,800 megabit megabits per second, we can see that this one is using traditional Wi-Fi 5. And they're all sharing that same channel there because it's so broad on this router. But again, that amount of control in terms of its priority, in terms of its access, most of this can be controlled via that safe access and profiling, something I'm going to get onto in just a moment. So, from here, we can adapt a lot of the settings of our Wi-Fi. We can create a brand new Wi-Fi connection on the fly. So we can go with test one, give it a password, which again, of course, I'm gonna go for the super dull password. So we've got my recording uh, blip there on screen. So we can go ahead and click password and then boom, click save. And that's it, we're now creating our brand new Wi-Fi connection. And if we choose to, we can bond this with physical connections on the router, those LAN connections, whether it's the one gigabit ethernet or the 2.5 gigabit um, ethernet there on the rear of the router. Again, all of this is possible on the graphical user interface of your web browser, but it's the fact that you can control and do all of this on the mobile app that really stands out. 
So as you can see, we've now created our brand new connection. It's there on the bottom of the screen. And from there, we can edit this connection, change its priority, whether you want it on a schedule, whether you want to be able to share it with, say, a 3D barcode there on screen very quickly on the fly, change its security level, because obviously it goes all the way up to WPA Enterprise. Um, and lots of stuff that you can change there, even filter out certain devices from being able to access this if we choose. With Smart Connect at the top, for those that aren't aware, is devices being handed over between the 2.5 gigahertz band and the 5 gigahertz band as they move away now 2.4 gigahertz for example is a slower performance overall um but at the same time it covers a greater distance 5 gigahertz uh that band if you're on 5 gigahertz and you get too far away it it just cops out so the idea that you can be automatically handed over to the 2.4 gigahertz band is going to be useful and the fact that you can adapt that to different connections there on the fly is very good let's quickly delete that there so as we go through the rest of this i'm going to leave this on screen again warts and all warts and all um we can talk a little bit more about um this system and its lan connections because the applic uh, when we're judging a mobile application for a router like this, we're not just looking at, you know, how user friendly it is. And yes, this is user friendly and quite responsive. And um, we want to see the level of control because if you're a system admin, control is what's important. If you go into the settings menu there, we can make our way into a lot of the ports and connections and what we want to change. So, for example, we can choose whether we want to activate that port forwarding there, something that's always going to be useful to do on the fly, particularly if, for example, you're at work and, you know, your kids, they're playing games, they need a port open to access a certain server. Obviously, it's a case-by-case -case basis, but it's going to be good to be able to do that. Now, no internet connections here. This is going to be for your WAN connection there. But again, you can appropriate things like the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connection as a WAN. But again, the fact there's only one 2.5 GBE port means you're losing out on some good network speed there. So it's going to come down to if you're already using an internet service provided um, service there, uh, uh, an internet connection, I should say, incoming that's greater than a gigabit. So carrying on on that subject of connections, let's go back to our device list. We can see there the wired connection coming into the system. So we can go with one of those wired connections there, find out more information about it as normal. Sadly though, the application does not feature any kind of overview of the LAN connections there. And by that, what I mean is uh, a topographical graphic showing which ports have been bonded together. Now, why is that important? Because obviously we can still see the things that are connected, you know, so we can see things that are connected on there. That's great. But what if we want to be able to see that two ports are being utilized as failover? What if we want to see that a particular Wi-Fi connection has been bonded alongside a physical port to keep those together in a virtual LAN? You can create them, but at the same time, I would have liked to have seen a topographical map on this app showing me that graphically, rather than having to kind of go the reverse way to only see things that are connected. It's a small complaint, but I would have liked to have seen connections that aren't being used and just seeing the physical list of things side by side. Now, a counter to that, what we can do when we go through this application and flicking through the different screens is we can, of course, monitor what's happening with the connection. So if we choose, we can go to the last 24 hours and then we can break down into not only different times of day when data has been utilized, but we can also break that down into the individual devices. Indeed, all the way down to the individual services too. So there's some great options there for historical data, but do bear in mind that in order to enable a lot of the historical data, you will need to maybe add storage to the system because this will rack up gradually over time and uh, all Synology users do not arrive with uh, like uh, additional storage bays internally. They've got USB upgradability, which is what we're using today in this. If we go to the USB device there, you can add a storage uh, area, which is great, but still nonetheless, if you are planning to use a lot of uh, the more, arguably be more NAS or uh, 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 statistical stuff you're not going to get that without a usb storage device to store all of that information on the subject of usb storage i should add if you use the a mobile application ds file you can access the contents of your router 
you can go straight in and access the content of your router via the DS file application. Again, that goes for download as well, and there's lots of multimedia stuff there, as well as photo backup from your phone onto a USB device connected to the router, which is a lovely little feature there. Something that Synology doesn't talk a great deal about, how uh, their routers actually mix into a number of their other applications. Rather, they treat it kind of as a standalone, separate enterprise there, but it's actually a lot more crossover than people might think. Which brings us neatly to safe access, another great feature of this system, which again, it isn't just for this router, it's for all of the Synology routers, and SRM 1.3 has made it a little bit better than ever before, and on the mobile it's displayed significantly better overall in terms of uh, breaking down into certain breadcrumbs. So, as you can see, on the router that I'm using, I've got several profiles already created. I've got a primary network profile there in terms of a device that's being um, utilized on its own, its own primary network. We've also got a NAS that I've put on its own primary network there. And again, we can find out more information about how much data has been used over time and more. On top of that, we can apply certain values to these devices, um, sites they can access, times they're allowed to have access, and also, not just the schedule, but total allocated quota time as well. But that really comes into its own when you look at accounts. So for example, we use the Eddy account there. As we can see, we can go into its historical data of how long it's been in operation. From there, we can then also see if we've blocked websites of this person, as well as security stuff that we may have applied to their account. And all of that is kind of readily available, all of that there. But where we break down into these profiles if we go into the edit settings there we can say whether we want them to have that schedule as mentioned so we can say they only have access for certain times of day we can then also break down into how much time they have and this time is spread by the way across multiple devices so if they're using a laptop phone and a tablet you can group all of those together under one heading and then from there ensure that that time quota and the schedule apply to all of their devices they can't go ahead and have three hours of allocated internet time a day and then use three hours on each device it's three hours shared between them which can be really useful for making sure say homework gets done or people aren't in front of the screen too long same goes for website filtering there are lots of preset values there but you can create a custom filter that lists different websites easily and quickly and we did a test there for another video um, on top of that safe search you can take advantage of google and other search engines automated safe search systems so therefore if they are going to be browsing certain websites you're able to use the application to um, force uh, parental locks and parental safety settings to remove certain search results without them having uh, being able to change it regardless of whether they've got an account so creating an account is very very fast you can go ahead create a new profile for a child adult or a network profile identity so again if we create a new adult profile give this person a device we'll give that person a photo we can access uh, photos from our phone so we can go ahead and just pull any photo we want we can pop any photo in there if we choose to we'll just skip that for now from there apply those settings that we want this person to have click save and we've now created a brand new profile which we can then merge into other ones or pre-apply other values we can even pause access immediately if we choose just by clicking there i'm not going to do that now because it would kick me out of here but that's how straightforward it is to create those profiles within the app something that was always easy on the desktop but it was never as easy and it's as responsive as this on the mobile application there now in terms of the information that the app does give you we've talked a lot about um, connected devices and usb information that the app can give but there's actually a lot more information now presented to the end user uh, about the router itself you can see there are lots of information about the router we've got running there we can break down into device information and resource information there we can also uh, find out a lot more about uh, the system's uh, remote access variable so if you're trying to access this system and you're using the Synology account or using quick connect uh, to a change things like port forwarding to change uh, some of those websites people are allowed to access or if you want to go ahead and go real double down changing some of the auto block settings because you're starting to see that someone's logging to the system too often um, you can block certain IPs or certain numbers of frequency of people accessing over a certain num of uh, number of times um, on top of that applying uh, either preset or customized 
uh, firewall rules can now all be done via the mobile application. Again, these are things that lots of people knew were in SRM, but the mobile application now allows us to control and monitor a lot of these things a great deal more easily from the mobile application. A lot of work has gone into this mobile app. And although, obviously, the skeleton of the application hasn't changed a great deal since uh, the previous revision of this app for iOS and Android, right now, the newer version of this app, for me, is a more completed product and a much better way to control a mobile app. And I'd go one further to say that much like the desktop user interface for Synology routers, although the hardware can sometimes feel a little bit too safe, and by safe I mean dull, um, or the desktop software and browser, uh, web browser desktop software is on point, right now this mobile app is now better than all the ones I've seen out there from Netgear, from D-Link, from all the different brands out there, there isn't a better mobile app for managing a router right now. Yes, the router itself could do with a few extra ports, but as far as the app's concerned, I think shy of uh, my complaint about uh, being able to visibly see physical ports on this application for a much easier at a glance overview of the physical connectivity of my router, I can't really fault this app in any other way, and I think it's another great example of Synology really honing design and focusing on the user experience more than any other brand out there. But this has been my review of Synology's DS Router 2.0 application for Android. I've not tested the iOS version, but I imagine it's near enough identical. Let me know if it is or isn't in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to learn more as we will be doing an enormous deep dive into the new router across multiple videos coming soon. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Use the free advice section linked in the description. Use the links to the review and more. Other than that, I will see you next time.